Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Illusion of Hope for Negroes Path 1. And this very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. This video is not a propaganda video and not a deliberate attempt to misinform anyone. The goal is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, he that lives upon hope will die fasting. Benjamin Franklin. And from Flavius in Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, these growing feathers plucked from Caesar's wing will make him fly an ordinary page. Who else would soar above the view of men and keep us in servile fearfulness? What we think. Here at the Renaissance, we believe we have the right to talk about the adults, the adults, etc. Now remember, you may have seen the attacks from some of the so-called African Americans or some info imposters, some of them claiming to be African Americans or whatever they choose to call themselves. We know they are some other thing, but hiding as though they were African Americans, trying to suggest or insinuate that we have no right to talk about them, whereas this is a two-ended stick. We are all at the receiving end and we reserve every right to talk about it. So, the Ados means the American descendants of former slaves, and the Idos actually means European descendants of former slaves. They are almost gone now because they can't see. Then you see the Ados also could mean all descendants of former slaves. Because if you consider Ados, you should be able to consider those that were shipped back to Liberia and Sierra Leone, which unfortunately most of these ignorant folks commenting here do not even know about. Then, our main goal is the so-called Negroes are the same people scattered all over the world and we believe we have the right to talk about them. If you research people like Marcus Garvey, people like Malcolm X, people like Martin Luther King Jr., people like Arthur G. Woodson, people like the Buzz, all of them were about Negro history. It is this poorly educated ignorant mental slaves that are coming with this idea of one group being different from another group which is what the slave master really wants they know that that plays into their hands for the divide and conquer divide and enslave that they are doing so ideally the adults were people whose forefathers did not escape the slave hunters and that does not mean that those whose fathers or forefathers escaped cannot talk about it so that's the only difference. Some people were smart enough or perhaps lucky to escape, others were not. So remember that no Negro or black person has a history beyond 1750s. Bear that in mind, it doesn't matter what they tell you now. If you think something like the statue of Martin Luther King Jr. is a history, it's a lie. They can pull it down anytime they want. Somebody can wake up tomorrow or be engineered like they have the likes of them today to say oh it's offensive to him it reminds him of the civil rights movement that it didn't happen the same way the criminal is claiming that the slave trade didn't happen or that the aborigines that's how somebody will wake up tomorrow and say the civil rights movement didn't happen that's how it works that's how they've been doing it which we are going to continue to show you on this channel so you will see how inconsequential it renders the Negroes if the world, according to the slave master, has been billions of years old and the furthest you can get and see any Negro is about the 1750s. That's the maximum. Beyond that, nothing. If you doubt what we're telling you, put it in the comment section that is a lie and put your relevant citations to that effect. So going further, no adults can trace his or her history beyond 1863. And this is a challenge for the likes of Dane and his followers because they can't provide any relevant citations. They can only say stories that are sweet because lies are sweet to hear. Otherwise, they can never trace their history beyond 1863. And the reason being that at that time, the name of the slave 
will be the name of his owner or her owner and not his real name so they have no names so if they are telling you how they are aboriginal that further makes them inconsequential it further makes them believe or confirm to everybody on earth that the negroes are subhuman which is most unfortunate so remember that the slave master's ultimate destination is to obliterate the negro race from the face of the earth and from history and from time and that the different appellations like agrometers Ethiopians, Guineans, Negroes, Colors, Blacks, African Americans, etc. does not change who the Negroes are. And the slave master also treats them the same way. You might doubt what we're saying, but the moment you get your head around who the Negroes really were, you will understand every move they make. Whether they make it in Nigeria, or in Cameroon, or in Ghana, or in any other part of East, West and Central Africa, you will understand it. And you may have seen the referendum conducted in Ethiopia, that's modern day Ethiopia. And perhaps you see the likes of Nigeria and Cameroon declaring anyone asking for freedom a terrorist. That should also help you understand what we are talking about. It is especially for the so-called African Americans that think that when they say African, they are talking about you. The Ethiopians may be in that geographical space called African, but to the slave master, the African is the Negro, because that's the appellation they gave him. The place wasn't known as Africa when the slave trade started in 1434. You need to bear that in mind. So, as an African American, when you hear things like Biafra, when you hear things like Ambazonia, if they call for funds, if they call for help, if they call for somebody to listen to them, you have to be the first to listen. The reason being that your forefathers are most likely from there or somebody related to you because those are where the Negroes were predominantly stolen from. You should be able to ask yourself why the slave master is negotiating a return to Ghana but not to this other place while they are being slaughtered in those areas. Ask yourself that very simple question. Also, you may remember that about a year ago, Buhari and Trump in a press conference said they were going to do something about the killings going on in Nigeria. Our question to you is one year after what did they do? Because they understand what they are doing. The man there is not Negro. They are all against the Negroes. That's exactly how they did the slave trade. They know that if they kept quiet about it, apply something they call silent or quiet diplomacy, the Negro will forget. That's why. So, to better understand the difference between the so-called Ados and the Negroes left in Sub-Saharan Africa and scattered all over the world, because remember, the Negroes were also slaves in the places like North Africa. So, the reason they keep telling you African, African is so that they can put everyone together while they know who they are targeting in their minds. For example, the Negroes were slaves in North Africa as well. So, when you are saying it's only African Americans that are Judah or whatever nonsense you choose to call them. Your question should be, so those ones that were shipped to what you call North Africa, those that were shipped to places like um, Europe, those were shipped to the Caribbeans, those that were shipped to Asia, what do you call those? So you see how the slave master's little poorly scripted narrative is deceiving you. So let us reference the African slave trade and its remedy by Thomas Powell Buxton Esquire and it was published 1840 and there we see something of interest. So although this author is obviously an abolitionist and now remember the criminals like the Indian wannabes are claiming that the slave trade was employment. Now you need to bear that in mind and remember that it is the slave master hiding behind them. They have no basic common sense. That's why they are saying it's employment. But there is this quote written by this author. We are not sure why, but he says, This is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none say it, restore. Isaiah 13:21. Below that, it says, "The desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose." Isaiah 35:1, something like that. But our interest is for you to also remember that the Bible and Quran and Torah are both codes. They put what they want to do in there. 
So if you can read them and study them, read between the lines, you will see where they are going. They are not prophecies, they are scripts. So we see here that Led ascended the Niger and the tributary, the Shada, in 1832, and was an eyewitness of the cruelties consequent on the slave trade while in the river near to the confluence of the two streams. He says, speaking of the incursion of the Felathas, scarcely a night passed, but we heard the screams of some unfortunate beings that were carried off into slavery by these villainous depredators. The inhabitants of the towns in the route of the Felathas, that's the Fulanese, fled across the river on the approach of the enemy. A few days after the arrival of the fugitives, a column of smoke rising in the air about five miles above the confluence marked the advance of the Fulanese. And in two days afterwards, the whole of the towns, including Adakuda and five or six others were in a blaze. The shrieks of the unfortunate wretches that had not escaped, answered by the loud wailings and lamentations of their friends and relations, encamped on the opposite bank of the river, had seen them carried off into slavery, and their habitations destroyed, produced a scene which, though common enough in the country, had seldom, if ever before, been witnessed by European eyes, and showed to me in a more striking light than I had hitherto beheld it, the horrors attendant upon slavery. So when you are hearing the adults today, they are simply those whose suffered as we are captured in a raid like this. Whereas those that you see in Sub-Saharan Africa, not all black people, we are going to show you that too. But the Negroes are those that escaped. In a scenario, read this very well, read between the lines, you can get the entire book and read it yourself completely, study it yourself to understand what we are talking about. Let us also reference travels in the interior districts of Africa performed in the years 1795, 1796 and 1797 with an account of a subsequent mission to that country in 1805 by Mongo Park, Surgeon, and it was published in 1816. And here we see that the wars of Africa are of two kinds which are distinguished by different appellations that species which bears the greatest resemblance to our European contest is denominated Kili, a word signifying to call out because such wars are openly avowed and previously declared. Wars of this description in Africa commonly terminate however in the course of a single campaign. A battle is fought, the vanquished selves don't think of rallying again the whole inhabitants become panic struck and the conquerors have only to bind the slaves and carry off their plunder and their victims such of the prisoners as through age or infirmity are unable to endure fatigue or are found unfit for sale are considered as useless and I have no doubts are frequently put to death. Now remember in our last video we saw why they used to put the old ones to death and in case you have forgotten they were afraid that if they left the old people without killing them then they were gonna use witchcraft and revenge on them so you see that it couldn't have been the same people and they also knew that whatever they were doing was wrong which is the same thing they are doing today because if you looked at the army let's say in a place like Nigeria or Cameroon you will see that the same army that was the slave hunting militia it's today doing the same thing to the Negroes, be it in Biafra or Ambazonia. If you looked at it from something like Boko Haram, you will see that they carefully claim to be rehabilitating the Northerners. Or better put, the Hamitic and other Negroid groups who were part of Boko Haram, while at the same time either verbally declaring and murdering the Negroes for asking for freedom. This should tell you exactly how the slave trade happened. You don't need to do a lot of research to understand this. The mere fact that they lied at all about how it was done and that what they are saying is totally different from what the records are showing should tell you all you need to know. But let's just move forward with what we're saying. But our interest in referencing this material is what it tells us about the Negro. Remember, we are looking at the little difference between the Negroes in the Americas and the Negroes in Europe and the Negroes in Asia and the Negroes left back in Africa today. So going further you see where it says the same fate commonly awaits a chief or any other person 
who has taken a very distinguished part in the war. Now ask yourself, if you are told that it was African chiefs that were capturing and selling their people, so why do you think another African chief will be killed for being part of a war? That's the same game the slave master and their foot soldiers play when the Fulani attack your community. If you retaliate or if you defend yourself, they will kill you. They will wipe out the entire community. If you doubt what we're saying, if you reference what the media advisor to the presidency in Nigeria said over Fulani invasion of other people's ancestral homes, what he said was that people should give them their lands to avoid being killed. That's how it worked. At that time, it was give them slaves, allow them whatever thing they want, just let them have it so they don't kill you. So that's how their conquest works. Now remember, it is the army that is doing the same thing. Because without the army, there is no way somebody can come and take over your house. That's why we asked you a simple question. How could someone else sell you? And then one clown came here to tell us that we see people kidnapped today. But he couldn't explain how 400 people make it to a slave ship without an army. So it is the army that comes and rounds up the entire community and take them all to the slave ship and that's it. And that's the same thing you see the Nigerian army do today. So if you were to resist, if you notice how they declared one group, a terrorist group in Biafra, did the same thing in Ambazonia in Cameroon, that's the same thing. But now you will be asking yourself, how come they say they are rehabilitating those of Boko Haram and then declaring those, asking them to build houses, build roads, and build schools as terrorists. That's how they are. The slave master understands that they lack this basic humanity and common sense. So that's why he hides behind them. So if you were to build a good business there, and the slave master doesn't like it, he just hides behind them and asks them to close it. That's the game. It doesn't change. Just open your eyes, you will see it. And so here you see what the author wrote about the Negroes and what they do after such situations. Those that manage to escape, this is what they do. And here it may be observed that notwithstanding this exterminating system, it is surprising to behold how soon an African town is rebuilt and repeopled. The circumstance arises probably from this that their pitched battles are few. The weakest know their own situation and seek safety in flight. So you see why the Negroes were running away. That's why we tell you till tomorrow from the records you can see that those that captured and sold the Negroes were not Negroes. So how can you be weaker than somebody that is exactly like you? Now if you want to understand the same scenario today, look at the Nigerian army. It is the apparatus of the state controlled by the Fulani. So if they come to attack you, are you going to stay? You will certainly run away and it will be like, oh, the same people killing themselves. Whereas the slave master knows who the fools are. He knows where the fools live as well. And he knows those are not Negroes. So that's how you say it. And he knows who to sell the weapons to. Now, take time and ask yourself this basic question. Before you can start shooting a gun, you would have learned how to operate it. The same people telling you that the Negroes were animals, they were naked, they lived on trees, they had no language. Are the same people telling you that they gave them guns and then now started capturing themselves to sell to them for nothing? Does that really make sense to you? If it does make sense to you, please explain to us how. And if you looked at the slave caravans, you will see that the slave drivers, the slave hunters wore clothes. So that should show you that they are not certainly the same people. It couldn't have been. So it goes further to say, when their country has been desolated and their ruined towns and villages deserted by the enemy, such of the inhabitants as have escaped the sword and the chain, the chain is the binding to take them as slaves, generally return, though with cautious steps, to the place of their nativity, for it seems to be the universal wish of mankind to spend the evening of their days where they passed their infancy. The poor Negro feels this desire in its full force. So remember very well that at that time the whole world were told that the Negroes did not have any racial attachments or affinities. They did not even have any attachment to parents, mother or sister. They were just beasts, lower than cattle. So if you were to keep them here, they would stay there. So that's how they explained the number they were exporting because the number was overwhelmingly too large for anything war. Now, if you have common sense and if you are not like those slave hunters that tell you that they use gun and then they capture 400 people, 
Now, if somebody has just one pump action, there is no way he can capture an entire village because they are going to fight back. Remember the poisoned arrows as well. So if they are telling you that, oh no, they gave them guns and they were capturing themselves, how could they feel one slave ship of 400 people? Just one. So that should tell you that they are not telling you the truth. It was an army thing which you can easily see. You don't need to believe us. We don't want you to believe us. We want you to read these accounts yourself. Then look at what is happening in places like Nigeria and Biafra, in places like Ambazonia and Cameroon. You will understand how the slave trade happened very easily. But it goes further to say, to him, no water is sweet, but what is drawn from his own well. And no tree has so cool and pleasant a shed as the Taba tree of his native village. When war compels him to abandon the delightful spot in which he first drew his breath, and seek for safety in some other kingdom his time is spent in talking about the country of his ancestors and no sooner is peace restored than he returns his he turns his back upon the land of strangers rebuilds with haste his fallen walls and exhausts to see the smoke ascend from his native village remember all these things were told in reverse they said the negroes did not have any such attachment which we are going to show you shortly and remember this author was killed by the fulanese if you doubt what we're saying just ask any nigerian you know who is mongo park whatever he tells you you take your research from there he is the equivalent of the christopher columbus where the americans tell you that he discovered an america that existed before he was born this is the same man but in the nigerian version they claimed that he discovered the source of the river Niger, which he never said in his book. But they claimed he discovered the source, even though he met people living there, fishing there, when he arrived. But that's what the slave master wanted people to believe. And that's what they teach children till tomorrow. So there is another account we will want you to compare with what he just said about the Negroes and what our differences between the so-called adults, that is the American descendants of slaves, and the Jamaicans, the Haitians, the Brazilians, the Europeans, that's the Negroes sold to those areas and the ones to the Middle East and the ones that are left back in Africa today. So we want you to see the difference and this is how it was back then if you were to conduct your own research. But then, before we draw that comparison, we want you to see something here. It says, those who have perused the journal of Messiah's Watt and Winthabotham through the Fuller country in 1794 and recollect how flattering a picture they gave of the urbanity and hospitality of the Fullers will be gratified on finding that this nation was known and distinguished from the rest of the Ethiopians at a remote period of antiquity. Now remember that the Negroes used to be known as Ethiopians. If you doubt what we're saying, conduct your research. So if you are listening to the Hebrew Israelites, claiming that Ethiopian Bible was anything and all, all that. They don't know where Ethiopia was. The Ethiopia of today is different from the Ethiopia of antiquity. You need to bear that in mind. And we just wanted to point this out before we reference the next material for the comparison. So let us reference a history of the colonization of Africa by alien races by Sahari H. Johnston and it was published 1899 and there we see something that contradicts what this author is saying. Remember his own was in 1790s. This is 1899. So you understand how the slave master changes the narrative. That's why it's important you conduct your own research instead of listening to us or anyone else. Just conduct your own research. At least take the hands of time beyond the period you know. That's the best way. So you see here that he claims that the Negro does not suffer from homesickness to the overbearing extent that afflicts other peoples torn from their homes. And provided he is well fed, he is easily made happy. Above all, he can toil hard under the hot sun. And that's our interest because you see the other one told us how those that escaped the manhunter would come back and rebuild their place. This one is telling us that the Negro doesn't feel anything like homesickness like other people. Now, remember at that time, all they were looking for are excuses and things to justify the slave trade. They claim that the Negro has no affinity 
the negro women give birth and just give it to you to be a slave and all that so you need to bear this in mind remember this was being written almost 100 years after the other one and remember also that that man was a doctor and he was killed by the Fulanese at that time then you notice that the slave master doesn't talk about his death if you check those who studied in Nigeria about him they rarely told anybody that he was murdered by the Fulani because the slave master is hiding behind their foot soldiers to do what he's doing again you see where they say the negro has no idea of racial affinity he will equally ally himself to the white or to the yellow races in order to subdue his fellow black or to regain his freedom from the domination of another negro tribe there may be here and there a revolt against the white rule in such and such a state but the diverse civilization under which the african will be trained and the different languages he will be taught to talk will be sufficient to make him as dissimilar to each national development as the white man has become in Europe. So you notice how they claim the Negro will align himself with others against his own. While this may appear very correct, but it may not be true because what they do is they plant an enemy within and while operating through that enemy within, they will tell you that no, it's their brother that is doing it. So notice how they told you today that it was the Negro selling themselves. If you doubt what we are saying, all you need to do is if you know somebody from the northern side of Nigeria, ask him he's gonna tell you that no the slave trade didn't get to the north it was the southerners selling themselves if you doubt what we're saying just try this then they're gonna tell you it's the southerners they won't tell you it's the army but many of them know that it's the army because the army was the slave hunting militia it was only rebranded in 1863 so now compare what they said that the negro will align himself with the white or yellow races with this statement here it says the white and yellow people have been the unconscious agents of the power behind nature in punishing the negro for his lazy backwardness so you see what we mean now they are telling you clearly here who did it but today they are telling you now it was the negroes that did it themselves if you also doubt what we're saying and you are too lazy to conduct your research if you looked at places like nigeria today and ambazonia look at biafra look at ambazonia and you see the same game being played by the slave masters and their foot soldiers so when they kill somebody they will tell you the person killed himself or they will tell you oh no it's them killing themselves that's just what they do they will never tell you who gave the order that's the same fulani because they own the army they own both sides don't think that biafra and ambazonia are being oppressed by different people it's the same fulanese both cameroon and uh, yeah, nigeria belong to them so going further so that you know today is very well remember when they claim that the negro doesn't work if you were to study your bible very well if you study it and read between the lines you might ultimately come to the conclusion that thy adam figuratively refers to the negro because the negro was blessed the most high blessed him with everything he needed including protection but he abandons it and runs after the slave masters gods and deities which is most unfortunate you might not understand what we're saying unless you look back in time and look at what the negroes were like before the slave masters came all these human sacrifices that they were living on the bush and all that are exactly like saddam hussein had weapons of mass destruction they are all lies and it says in this world natural law ordains that all mankind must walk to a reasonable extent must rest from its environment sustenance for body and mind and a bit over to start the children from a higher level than the parents the races that will not work persistently and doggedly are trampled on and in time displaced by those who do let the negro take this to heart let him devote his fine muscular development in the first place to the setting of his own rank untidy continent in order if he will not walk of his own free will now that freedom of action is temporarily restored to him if he will not till and manure and drain and irrigate the soil of his country in a steady laborious way as do the oriental and the european if he will not apply himself zealously under european tuition to the development of the vast resources of tropical africa 
where hitherto he has led and wasteful, unproductive life of a whatever. But our interest is for you to see their own argument. What is somebody else's business about another who he does not feed? That should be your question. Now remember, that's where their foot soldiers come in. Like we told you, they lack the most basic of humanity and common sense. If you doubt what we're saying, just engage one of them. Let's say somebody like in the Nigerian army. Ask him, why are you people killing yourselves? You will see his defense. You will wonder if you are talking to a human being or some monster or something different from what you were told was human in your school. So it is them that make Africans look stupid. And we give you a little example here. You see a car manufacturing outfit. This was set up by a Negro man who has, and that was because a Negro was in power back then. But you notice that as soon as the slave master's food soldier got power in 2015, they have been working to close it. Now, the reason they close it is because the slave master and their foot soldiers plan is to make sure that they take out the Negroes from wherever they are, replace them, scatter them all over the world, so they still remain slaves. But people may not know. If you are doubting us, we will prove it to you in a subsequent video. In the event you want to take it a bit further, remember when Obama took office and he was bailing out auto manufacturing companies in the United States. Now, think about it. This other person took power and his own interest was to close the only car manufacturing company of his own, supposedly his own people. That should right there tell you. They would rather close it and go and bring Peugeot from France or bring any other thing but not anyone by the Negro. This is an agreement they have. You may not understand it. You may not even see it. But we challenge you to conduct a basic research and then monitor what is going on there. When you have their media not reporting certain things in the same line and lying the same pattern, that should tell you right there that there must be somewhere they meet and discuss what they want to report. This is very simple. So if you are in doubt as to what the meanings of what they wrote are and you can't conduct research, you may have noticed that they are always on the side of the Muslims while pretending not to be. Now remember both religions are alien to the Negro. See here where their plan is well documented and it says paganism will disappear. That's paganism according to the slave masters. Not that it is real paganism, but paganism according to the slave masters. Remember the Negroes own a god that created and governs heaven and earth. You can see it on your screen and you can conduct additional research on this. So that should explain to you their own definition of paganism and why you should not believe anyone. You have to conduct your own research. So you see that the continent will soon be divided between nominal Christians, not real or genuine Christians, so, and nominal Mohammedans with a strong tendency on the part of the Mohammedans towards an easygoing rationalism such as is first making its way in Algeria where the townspeople and the cultivators in the more settled districts constantly coming into contact with Europeans are becoming indifferent to the more inconvenient among their Mohammedan observances and are content to live with little more religion than an observance of the laws and a desire to get on well with their neighbors. Yet, before Mohammedanism loses its sever, there will probably be many uprisings against Christian rule among Mohammedan peoples who have been newly subjected to control. So you see what it means. It's just control. And you see where it says the Arab and the Hamite for religious reasons may strive again and again to shake off the Christian yoke. But I strongly doubt whether there will be any universal mutiny of the black man against the white. So you see that they understand the games that are being played. The only thing is the enemies within. That's the only problem. Without the enemies within, the slave master cannot do all he's doing. And that's the reason you notice that the so-called African Americans are distancing themselves from Africa without knowing that the place was not even known as Africa when their forefathers were captured. That's one thing you have to bear in mind and that's the danger of listening to some ignorant folks who are just slave masters food soldiers as well. And remember what Marcus Garvey said, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without roots. Stop believing the lies of the slave master and seek to understudy how your forefathers lived. 
There is no way your forefathers could have just been so stupid that they didn't leave any trace of how they lived. Nobody recorded it. They just kept lying to you. Now remember, we were told that Negroes never had a writing. There. There's nothing they write and all that. But this is a lie. Because if you notice, the Negroes or the Igbos in what is in the Bight of Biafra, they used to write what was called in CBD. Today, a lot of people write it. Has the slave master told you about it? Have you seen it anywhere? That's what they use their foot soldiers to prevent from coming out. So they use their foot soldiers to impose their academic curriculum, impose their values and everything. So ultimately, what their system is doing is to prepare the Negro to be slaves in their place. And moving forward, we got this interesting comment from one of those their foot soldiers, a Fulani. He says, Oh my gee, so my DNA finally connects me with a Fulani ancestor. His son name is Diallo, which means merchant. They are a family that traded slaves. So how the hell did my family get over to the United States? See, watch, read it very well. I have done some research and I see it happened during the Holy War against the traditional African Fulani and the Islamic Fulani in Guinea. My Fulani cousin is in Guinea. Now, if you may think he's just blabbing or writing, that's who they are. They are the foot soldiers of the slave masters used to turn the stories around. Now ask him by who. He still noticed that he still said it was by the Fulani. The two Fulanis we are fighting. It's them. Anything by the slave trade is the Arabs, the Fulanis and the Europeans. There is no way the prey can be the predator at the same time. It doesn't work. So now he is going to use this to tell you that they were also sold whether in error or not. But it's a lie. They don't have what the slave master saw in the negroes because if you put a flan in the house he's gonna kill you there are no two ways about it the negroes are very peaceful all the killings you see in sub-saharan africa are being done by them now we will tell you the role of poverty in inciting the negro against his sibling and we will show you that later but but we'll look at this case very well so someone replied him to say i have watched the channel but never commented he, the Renaissance, will tell you that no Fulani were sold into slavery. He will also tell you that DNA was just now invented. I trust that you have a Fulani cousin. You will find you will have cousins from other tribes as well. So now, ask yourself, why are they so interested in protecting the Fulani? That's the same thing they are doing in Sub-Saharan Africa till today. If you notice, the media will not report their killings. That's the same way. Now, you see, the same person that in his comment is telling you that there was a holy war against the traditional African Fulani and the Islamic Fulani in Guinea. It's also still telling you that Fulanis were not behind the slave trade. You see how he put himself right there. Now, you see why the slave master is able to use them very well. If you don't get it, let's show you the name of the person he's citing as his case of proof that Fulanis were also sold. Let us reference the Gentleman's Magazine and Historical Chronicle Volume 20 for the year 1750 by Silvanus Urban Gent. And it says that Job Ben Solomon was a person of great distinction in his own country. In the year 1731, as he was driving his herds of cattle across the countries in Jagara or whatever. Now remember they can wipe out an entire community because of one cattle and they claim that the Negro is lower than cattle. Now to better understand how their reasoning works, somebody from somewhere tells you that somebody that looks like you is lower than cattle. You believe it, you say it, you dance it, you sleep it, you live it, you kill them in preference to cattle and you still think your reasoning a capacity is okay. So look at this case very well. You will use it to understand who they are. The army in Cameroon, the army in Nigeria, the army in the sub-region was their slave hunting militia. It was only rebranded in 1863 when they lost the export of Negro slaves to the American market. If you doubt us, conduct your research. So you see where it goes further to say, he was seized and carried to Joa, where he was told, sold to Captain Pike, commander of the ship, a rebel or whatever who carried him to Maryland and sold him to a planter. Here, Job lived about a year without being once beat by his master, at the end of which he had the good fortune to have a letter of his own writing in the Arabic tongue conveyed to England. This letter coming to the hand of Mr. Oglethorpe, he sent it to Oxford to be translated. 
the translation pleased him so much and gave him to a good an opinion of the man that he directly ordered him to be brought from his master. But soon after letting out for Georgia, before he returned from thence, Job was brought to England where waiting on the learned sir whatever, he was found to be a perfect master of the Arabic tongue by translating several manuscripts and interpretation. Those are not our issue. Now remember that by 1731, the slave trade was still very hot. So ask yourself why out of many or millions of Negroes that were enslaved in the US and elsewhere all over the world, he was the only one picked up. So you see how their reasoning works. So he is telling you that he was also sold. Whereas they were the biggest culprits, they are the slave masters, foot soldiers in that area till tomorrow morning. So you understand what we're talking about. So you might think, oh, this is a magazine. Let's show you another reference about this same job Ben Solomon. So when you ask any Fulani, you claim you people were also sold. Remember to ask him by who. And then when you have done that, remember to remind them that this same person they claim was also sold, was redeemed almost as soon as it was discovered that he was Fulani. So we quickly reference Middleton A, 1948, the strange story of Job Ben Solomon. And here you see his picture and you can see that he is not a Negro. But then going further in this same journal, you see the account of his sale and uh, redemption. And it says, racially, Job was an Arab with an infusion of negro blood so you they obviously mistook him for a negro that's all so you need to understand the game now if you notice you see how he came to claim that they were also sold so remember that the slave master was buying the negroes because they were peaceful they were not going to murder you according to them they were born slaves whatever it be the case but they had skills they were hard working they had everything the slave master was looking for that's why if you look at the inventions today, you will see that they are coming from that region while the slave master uses their foot soldiers to make sure that they don't see the light of the day. So no matter what you like, build as a Negro child in Sub-Saharan Africa, be it in Ambazonia or Biafra or any other part of that sub-region, the slave master will use his foot soldiers and destroy that dream. It doesn't matter what you think, all you need to do is conduct your research. So it goes further to say, his Arabian grandfather, Ibrahim, had established himself as high priest of Bonda, a small community in the Negro kingdom of Futa that lay astride the Senegal River and extended south to the Gambia River on the far side of the Mauritania Sahara. When he died, his son, Solomon ben Ibrahim, succeeded to his authority and continued the benevolent rule for which Bonda was celebrated. So, but our interest is for you to see how they claim that they were also sold. Now, remember, all their interest here is to make it look like they were also victims, whereas they were actually the slave hunters. Now, if you notice again, when you look at somebody like Den Calloway, you will see clearly that he keeps saying the slave trade was no longer slave trade, but was now employment. He is also den denying Nat Turner. So one of their goals at that time, if you notice in this account, they said that Job Ben Solomon was never beaten by his master. That was their polite way of claiming that they were actually human. The Negroes are not human. So because this one is not a Negro but human, that's why he wasn't beaten. So the ones who are beaten are the animals. You just imagine if the cattle that people beat today, people kill and eat today, were declared humans tomorrow. That's exactly what happened in the case of the Negro. But the slave master is a liar. That's why he doesn't tell people that he was capturing the Negroes because of their skills. Because of what they could do. He instead told people that he was capturing them to civilize them. The same reason they provided for bringing Christianity and Islam. Now tell us, if somebody lies to you once, why do you want to believe him any other time in future? Remember also this comment from one so-called child of the sun. And he says, uh, laughing my ass off, the majority of the African Americans, aka black Americans, never came on ships. They was already in North America, which equals descendants of the Olmec people. One of the biggest slave plantations was in New York City, cause the niggas was already there. Only some came on ships, which were betrayed by Africans 
who teamed up with the slave masters. So you see some of them, they just say things that make no sense because the slave master already conditioned them to come and propagate rubbish. So we had asked him for a relevant citation which you know they can never provide because the narrative conflicts with what the records are saying. So let's show you about this individual what debunks his claim. So from the book we referenced earlier, we see where he tells us about the number being exported and he says, then she almost outdid drive our nations, that's the British, the late Dr. Robert Brown in his interesting work, The Story of Africa, computes that in little more than a century, from 1680 to 1786, 2.13 million Negro slaves were imported into the English American colonies. Jamaica in the course of 80 years, absorbing 610,000. Towards the later end of the 18th century, the various European powers interested in America imported on an average over whatever, but our interest is for you to see that that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. So please notice the average of 70k per year and factor in the various countries that we are doing it. This was something they were doing like stock exchange today. That's the best way to describe it and your research will convince you that these Indian wannabes are just a bunch of lazy people who cannot research. And of course, you wouldn't expect that we will finish talking about all these uh, slave master food soldiers without remembering their chief, the chief liar himself. Here he claims that the term African was never used throughout any colonial documentation when referring to our ancestors. They used the terms Indian, mulatto, colored, and negro when referring to our people here in the Americas. The term African referred to the pale people of Tunisia, not us. So you see how ignorant Den Calloway is. And remember, because he's working for the slave master, he understands that all you need to make a lie true, especially with the Negroes, is to just continue telling it. If you can lie as often as possible, then that lie becomes true. That's why you notice that no matter how many people tell him that he's lying, he continues to say it because that's what he has been commissioned to do. So you see the danger of listening or believing someone without investigating it yourself. It doesn't matter how sweet the lie is. All you need to do is conduct basic research. Use your common sense. Like we told you, the slave hunters of old, according to the slave master, were not very smart people. So whoever their foot soldiers are can never be smart. Likewise, their descendants. You saw the Fulani that came to say Fulanis were also sold. You saw him still tell you that he was the same fool and that sold themselves. So you see what we're talking about. But then, let us reference Afro-American Encyclopedia or the thoughts, doings and sayings of the race. Embracing addresses, lectures, biographical sketches, sermons, poems, norms of universities, colleges, seminaries, whatever. Illustrated with beautiful half-tone engravings compiled and arranged by James T. It Hurley and it was sold by subscription exclusively and you see it was published in 1896 and there we see I believe it today that if the colored people of this country are ever elevated and that they must be it could only be done through their own personal efforts sanctioned and encouraged by the white people of the land and I believe further Mr. Chairman, that the strong advocate of African-American Methodism and the African race, the arms of whose hands shall be made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. That advocate, I believe, is yet to arise out of the assembly of massive intellects and fearless moral heroes who follow the lead of the conscious whatever. But our interest is for you to see African-American Methodism right there. But he starts claiming that they never used it for who are his uh, ancestors, if we may ask. So again, remember, believe what you like, but conduct a research. We are sure that when you conduct a research, you are no longer going to say Mr. A or Mr. B said. You are going to say, you know, that's our interest. But before we round up, let us quickly look at some of the objections to the ab abolition of the slave trade. Now, remember what your clown, Den Calloway, is telling you was employment was something a lot of people fought and died over. A lot of people lost their lives just to have it abolished. So you can understand the enormity of his lies and other Indian wannabes. 
So we reference objections to the abolition of the slave trade with answers to which are prefixed strictures on a late publication entitled Considerations on the Emancipation of Negroes and the Abolition of the Slave Trade by the West India Planter by the Reverend James Ramsey and it was published 1788 and there we see the various reasons people provided as to why the slave trade should be continued. So here we see objection 11 and it says Dr. Burton, secretary to this society, wrote a letter to Mr. Benezet under the direction of an eminent prelate which acknowledged the lawfulness of slavery as mentioned in the Bible. Then the answer that is this author is saying why it should be discontinued. So he is listing all the reasons people have on as to why the slave trade should continue and countering them with his own responses. So it's incumbent on you to look at this book yourself and study it so you understand what it was like back then. Stop listening to the Indian wannabes. Those are people who paid by the slave masters to misinform the Negroes. So he says that letter appears plainly to have been written under the impression of an alarm for the consequence of agitating then the question of liberty for which the slaves were not prepared nor the times fit. But even in these circumstances, the society demanded for the slaves all that we contend for in the present advanced state of the question, that slaves should be treated with the utmost care and kindness, both with regard to temporals and spirituals, that their labor should be made easy to them in all respects, that they should be provided with conveniences and accommodations to render their situation comfortable and especially that they should be regularly instructed in the principles of the Christian religion. The abstract question, is slavery lawful, is not now agitated. We may allow its lawfulness in any case where it can be proved that injustice, murder, oppression and avarice has not been exercised. You can continue reading it yourself, but our interest is for you to see what the criminal liar is calling employment so you understand where they are going to so when they start it initially it looks like child play but after a while you it will manifest where they are heading to see how he first started to say it's employment only that they were not paid enough they now came with how only four hundred thousand were brought so this is their pathway to ultimately saying it never happened now again remember one question we asked you if the date today is 2019 and they are telling you that the world is billions of years old. What were the dates before? Like, try to calibrate them yourself and you will understand what we're saying. That will be simple enough. But we are running out of time. So, objection 17 says Negroes are inferior race of beings. And his response was that this is boldly affirmed by Mr. Earthwick. But every man of candor acquainted with them will deny it. But suppose it. Will those who plead for laws in favor of horses maintain that Negroes are to be threepenned, murdered by thousands, and enslaved for the indulgence of our avarice? Now remember why you have to see that their foot soldiers are the people without even the most basic of common sense in sub-Saharan Africa. This is what they believe too, that the Negroes are lower than cattle. So imagine how sensible somebody who believes that another who looks like him is lower than cattle. So that's why when they give them guns, you see them murdering everywhere. You see a replica of whatever the US or Europeans have in that place without them asking what is in this for us because they have been conditioned to believe that the Negroes are not human. If you doubt what we're saying, all you need to do is just try and discuss with somebody who is in the armies in that region. Ask them why they are killing themselves. Now you will notice that people like Ethiopia, people like Eritrea, people like Somaliland and Somalia, they have referenda or whatever. They even have independent countries that are not recognized. You can Google Somaliland to see what we mean. But in Nigeria, in Ambazonia, in Biafra, in Cameroon, you see that if you mention that you want freedom, they already want to kill you. There are jails filled to capacity with people that are agitating for freedom. But unfortunately, the rest of the world do not know because their foot soldiers are the people that lack the most basic of humanity and common sense. If you doubt us, 
conduct your own research. Put it in the comment section that we have lied somewhere. That's all you need to do. And you can read the one of slaves of Negro Grandes yourself, but we need to move forward because we're running out of time. And you may never have heard that the Negroes were slaves even before the last slave trade. Even till today, they are still slaves, which if you want to understand it, just ask yourself why they will be asking for freedom in a place like Biafra or Ambazonia and they are killed just for asking. We are not saying they have done something or no action taken, just the asking. So look at objection 19 and it says, so it says Leo Africanus describes the Negroes of his time anno 1500 as brutish and then sold for slaves before the commencement of the present traffic this is all in defense of the traffic at that time if you notice if you spoke with any fulanese or any of the hermetic groups in sub-saharan africa today he will have a thousand and one reasons why the army is right and why they should be killed if you doubt what we're saying just do your own independent research innocently don't attach it to anything you will understand what we're saying so his response was that he says the shepherds and mountaineers of all the different african nations as well as negroes were brutish so you see the author is saying that the africanos was saying both the shepherds and the negroes were but today if you notice it is those shepherds so-called shepherds or whatever he chose to call them that are the ones killing people but the negroes are seen in the same light going further i said but that the people of the plains and cities were polished having arts sciences and laws among them he visited only the settlements along the senegal branch of the niger and says the countries southwards were possessed by rich industrious people note this very well great lovers of justice and equity so if you were to go and speak to those biafra and ambazonia people you will understand that all they are looking for is justice, equity and fairness. But you see that their state, because these are slave masters, food soldiers, they lack both basic common sense and humanity. Imagine somebody asking you for food. You take a gun and kill him and say you have sense. Does that make sense to you? If it makes sense to you, please put it in the comment section. But the slave master leverages on their obvious lack of common sense, gives them guns and bullets and incites them to start killing because he already knows them. His uh, forefathers already told him who the fools were that's why you notice that even a child born in europe tomorrow will know where to find the fool in sub-saharan africa he knows where they live he is given and well documented where to find them so going further he says he mentions the kings of timbotu and bono two negro states as going to war to take slaves to be sold to merchants trading to egypt and the mediterranean cities but do we argue for slavery because at all times the strong have entrailed the weak because joseph was sold by his brethren was pharaoh vindicated for enslaving the whole hebrew nation or are we to continue forever to encourage negroes to kidnap each other to be sold to us because 300 years ago the king of timbotu kidnapped and sold his neighbors so now we want you to note that group he called Bono there because somebody asked a question about that group. And this one says objection 34. Slaves are captives saved from this world under a tacit agreement of serving the conqueror or him to whom be he may allot their services under pain if at any time disobedient of being put to the sword. Now you see they come up with all kinds of lies at that time to justify their trade, which is what they still do to today. If you just want to understand it, don't mind whatever you believe. All you need to do, engage anyone, especially in the Nigerian army or in their government or the Cameroonian army and their government. Now remember, the same Fulani is on those whole areas. So you will see what excuses and what stories they will tell you as to their reasons for killing their so-called or perceived or assumed siblings for asking for freedom just do this basic simple experiment you will understand what we're saying it's very simple to see then you will now correlate it with why the slave master is quiet and silent over the killings you won't hear your amnesty international jumping around and condemning those killings because they know they are all in on the game and here they tell us that the Negroes are happier in the colonies than in Africa and the response is positively denied. 
do they ever offer themselves to be received into our slave ships to escape from their wretched country? Is there not a charm in the place of nativity that makes to the natives Greenland more desirable than the polished parts of Europe? Do they not seize every opportunity of rising against or escaping from their oppressors? Do they not increase in their own country and decrease in our more desirable colonies? For one moment, suppose this true, for one that lives so settled in the West Indies, ten are killed, suffocated or lost to Africa. To make one man happy, must ten be destroyed? But how can wretched Africa bear an annual loss of 200,000 people in the prime of life, at which the slave trade and its consequences may be fairly estimated? While happy West Indians, by the report of the African merchant, a writer on the planter's side, require an annual supply of 40,000 or nearly one tenth of the whole. So again, you notice on top that he says polished parts of Europe. That was when the slave trade was actually pouring in many Negroes into Europe. The same way America is talking about them today. That's how they used to be talked about in Europe. But the slave master has somehow found a way. To eliminate all, most of them for example if if you knew someone like Equian Oloda by right his descendants should have been known till today but where are they gone and you can pause and read these ones yourself he says the emancipation of slaves will ruin the master and then further down he says if freed they will not work and the response is that this conclusion is drawn from the indolence of savages but it is not proposed to free them Till they shall have been civilized and prepared for the government of law and have their master's consent to suppose that in such circumstances they will not exert themselves to procure the conveniences and comforts of life in the same manner as other civilized people is to deny them the attributes of human nature but you can pause the video and read the entire thing yourself we conclude with one other one that population is checked by an over proportion of males now remember this is why they use their slave hunting armies to use their vaccines and render most of the male negroes impotent without them knowing so they will tell you oh they are coming for polio they are coming for this the question is were these diseases there before they came with their immunizations remember when they first came they said oh malaria was killing them our people were having a good time our people were taking care of themselves, the doctors were there, but instead they turned it around. Today they make billions from malaria drugs. So you see how sort of the slave master can be. But you can read this yourself so you understand where their population control is coming from and what they are doing. So it goes further to say slaves are not kidnapped by our traders but culprits or prisoners of war. So we do not say that any great proportion of them are now kidnapped by our traders because as far as they can reach with their boats, the country is either desolated by former depredations or is under such police as makes it rather dangerous. Though it sometimes happens that we hear of a captain making what he calls a stroke, sweeping away as many free men as he can overpower with his crew. But we say that the natives kidnap each other and that criminals make but a very small proportion of the whole. That they are kidnapped is almost the universal answer from those brought into our colonies. Nor can the numbers brought down to the coast be accounted for in any other manner. Evidence has been delivered in on the present question of kidnapping having been practiced even in his fight in his sight who gave the testimony but suppose them culprits or prisoners of war are we then the executioners for african tyrants or african judges are we to punish unfortunate wretches by the various deaths endured in our slave ships offer a guinea captain condemned for murdering his crew or his slaves his life on condition of being fettered and treated as a slave in the passage to the west indies he would run for refuge to the gallows so you can read the entire thing yourself but our interest is for you to see how brutal these things were so when you listen to the lights of then they are ignorant or perhaps be clouded by the payments the slave master has paid them to propagate his lies and cover his tracks and finally you see that this one says they are the children of women kept for breeding slaves 
that's the slave so because they were explaining to people the same thing you see the likes of um, the indian wannabe saying today oh how where did they find the ship even when they knew about titanic as a ship they are thinking that the slave master hadn't built ship by that time so you see how small their brains are so this one claims that the slaves were children of women just kept somewhere all they do is to produce slaves you remember they don't talk about reproduction they don't talk about the fathers because at that time they claimed that the negro had no attachment to his siblings so the response was that then they would be sold when children but the slave cargoes consist of all ages of both sexes which have been kidnapped or enslaved in wars made on purpose to accommodate the dealers in this horrid traffic. Now if you notice where it goes further to say the king of Dahomey murders his people for his amusement therefore we made traffic in slaves. They had all justifications but the unfortunate thing is that they are foot soldiers in sub-Saharan Africa. Those are the ones that lack basic humanity and common sense. You have seen from the videos of how abusive those armies are. Those armies were the slave hunters of old. So all the slave master did was to glorify them. So if you see them today, they feel that they are on top of the world. Whereas they are actually the slave hunters. And before we conclude, from the book we referenced earlier, you see where it says, From this stock, either in its first place of expansion, Arabia or in Northeast Africa, diverged the black negro. And the footnote tells you that the black negro is not really black it says not perhaps black originally but a dirty yellow brown like the bushmen and hottentots and newborn negro infants the distinction of hair is perhaps the best definition of those allied races the woolly haired negro the curly haired hamite and the straight haired semite so you understand what distinctions are so when they are telling you oh indians and negroes could have coexisted side by side it's a lie it doesn't even make sense and you see where it tells you that the early african was of a very low negroid type like bushmen and hottentots and was also akin to the negroid people still existing in southern asia and oceania whatever be the case you see what the negro is all about at least for you to understand that they are different if you see the very thick black so-called um, Africans or whatever they choose to call them those are not Negroes their target in all this game is the Negroes and before we round up let us reference Romance of Empire the land of the golden trade West Africa by John Lang and it was published in 1910 notice that he called it the golden trade and you saw what he drew in front you need to look at the images and pay very close attention to details they understand what they are doing the only problem is they are foot soldiers in sub-saharan africa if you think those governments there are actual governments that are free from the slave master's yoke it's a lie the only challenge is that they lack just basic humanity and common sense that's all otherwise you would have known what we're talking about very easily so he tells us that and again there is that other name which pertains to the entire coast a name familiar to us all guinea it is common knowledge that the coin best known in the time of our grandfathers and to which though it no longer circulates we still cling in the matter of subscriptions and in the payment of sundry to familiar fees received its name because it was originally made of gold brought from the guinea coast of to England by the African company whose charter granted by Charles II permitted them to coin gold and to display their stamp on elephant on the reverse of the coin. The same company also turned out from the same source five gold pieces like the guinea. So now remember most people will tell you that oh no it's uh, the coin the gold that made them call it guinea and not the slaves. We leave that for another day but going further you see that it starts talking about the etymology of the word guinea but now remember that guinea the most of them is now concentrated around where you call nigeria biafra and ambazonia because they are chasing the negroes believe it or not let us reference the cause of central africa by captain guy burras and it was a campaign amongst cannibals and it was published in 1903 and there we see an image of interest so we see some what would look like 
stark naked negro women and their kids if you looked at it very well it will portray an image of this is how they lived but if you looked around you will see there were no houses ideally these people would have been in their house there is no way they would have come out to an open place like this to take pictures that should tell you that these are captured slaves they have captured them stripped them naked to prove to the world at that time that though they lived naked and lived on trees and all that now if you looked on the left there's an image of someone else a man but he's wearing clothes this is further buttressed by the fact that you will see these recruits military recruits they are all naked you see where it says carriers are waiting others first then you see the military ones you see how they carefully made this other picture a bit more blurry so you see new recruits this is how they captured them and put them in the army so that they can go kill themselves we do not have enough time to go further on this it's incumbent on you to conduct your own research or at least look for these materials study them yourself read between the lines compare what these books are saying with what the mainstream narrative is saying you'll be able to see who the liar is and you will be able to at least assess how unintelligent or otherwise their foot soldiers in sub-saharan africa are and here we come to the end of this edition of the illusion of hope for negroes part one we thank you very much for listening and we encourage you very dearly to find time to conduct your own research peace